and in today's video, I am partnering with Talisha of Creativity by T. This is the fourth episode in our really great summer vacation sewing series. And we are so excited to bring you the final garment in this series. But before we get into that, if you're new to my channel, welcome. And if you're a returning person, thank you so much for your continued support. It truly means the world to me. All right, let's get into this video. If you hadn't heard about this series before, Talisha and I thought it would be a really great idea to put together some essential summer vacation sewing garments that you can make for your next summer vacation. Now this series is for the mature and sophisticated woman, okay, all of the items that we are sharing with you are classy and comfortable and cute and we just think that you will love them for your next summer vacation. So if you are looking for some sewing inspiration, I encourage you to watch all four episodes on my channel as well as all four episodes on Talisha's channel as well. If you're not already subscribed to Talisha, I encourage you to please subscribe to her channel as well as mine because Talisha has so much to offer and I do too and I think that you'll enjoy our videos. Now, let me tell you what the episodes were previously, okay? So in our first episode, we each made a top. Second episode, we each made a swimsuit cover-up. Third episode, we made the best, most perfect, most classy, comfortable beach pants. And in today's episodes, we are bringing you the essential summer beach dress or summer dress. Okay, this dress is a dress that will transition you from your morning activities to your evening activities. And we each have a different pattern that we're sharing with you. So I encourage you to watch this video, then head over to Talisha's channel and watch her video as well. To celebrate the closing of our summer vacation sewing series, Talisha and I are both doing a giveaway. So at the end of this video, you have the opportunity to enter into this giveaway. You can enter into the giveaway on my channel as well as on her channel. So stay tuned to the end of the video so that you can learn how to enter this giveaway. All right, let's get into this dress. The perfect summer beach dress or summer essential dress in my opinion is a dress that transitions you from all activities throughout the day but also looks really great for a dinner date, okay? Something that's comfortable, something that's colorful, something that's very cute, okay? So for me, I have chosen to do the Simplicity S9597. This is a Mimi G pattern. I love this pattern. It did come with some challenges, we'll get into that, but I do want to say that I think that this is a really great dress for anyone's summer vacation. However, you will have to do some tweaking to this pattern if you have different um, challenges with fitting, say, your bust, okay? We'll get into that. But this particular dress is really great. It is a really long dress. It stops right above the ankles. Um, it's longer in the back than it is in the front. The cool thing about this pattern is that it comes with a jumpsuit as well as a dress, and it has a really nice open back with buttons on the back band of the bodice of the dress. So cute. It also has really great spaghetti straps and I'll insert a picture so that you can see what this pattern looks like up close. This particular pattern is, I'm going to say intermediate. I actually need to double check that on the website and if I am incorrect, I will go ahead and write the rating that Simplicity thinks it is across the screen on this video. The reason why I say that it's an intermediate pattern is because there are a lot of really great details that require some additional attention and skill and patience, okay? One of the things is the bodice is fully lined. The other thing is there are buttons and button loops on the back of the bodice of the dress. So you have to be able to make those little button loops out of fabric and also sew on buttons which isn't terribly difficult, but if you've never done it before, it is a more advanced skill. Also, there are lots of gathers, and gathers can be tricky as well if you don't have a gathering foot for your sewing machine or if you don't know how to gather on your serger. So you have to do the gathers by hand. This pattern actually comes with several pattern pieces, and I'll pull out the instructions so I can tell you exactly how many pattern pieces there are. I don't want to say that a beginner cannot make this dress because I am one of those people that when I started sewing, I just made what I wanted to make. I didn't always just make beginner projects. However, um, I do want to say that it will take some patience and it it is going to test you and give you some new skills that you may not have tried before. The really great thing about Simplicity patterns and Mimi G patterns in particular is that 
on Mimi G's channel and on the Simplicity channel, you will be able to find a sew along for every single Mimi G pattern. So for my beginners and also my seasoned sewing friends, I do encourage you to watch these sew alongs because they're fantastic. I personally watched the sew along for this pattern Oh my gosh, like weeks before I even received my fabric. So <laughs> I do that often just to get myself pumped up and excited about making something new. I will watch the sew along, get kind of like a base knowledge of how it's put together. And then when I actually sew the garment, for the most part, I just follow the instructions so that I can give a clear review to you as to how the instructions walked me through the process of putting the garment together. All right, let's look at the number of pattern pieces for the dress. So for the dress, we have a total of nine pattern pieces as well as the elastic guide in order to tell you how much elastic to cut out for the back of the dress. Let's talk about the fabric that I chose for this dress. I have been really obsessed with Rayon Shally lately. For one, the colors are so vibrant and beautiful and a lot of the Rayon Shally pieces that I've been picking up have just been so exciting and fun for me. I need all that color in my life, okay? And they tend to hold on to their color after you wash them. So for me, I find that to be a really attractive quality in fabric. The other reason why I really love sewing with Rayon Shelley is that it's very lightweight, drapey, and breezy and perfect for summer. So I chose to use a Rayon Shelley. This is my dress here. And the Rayon Shelley that I chose is actually a Mimi G fabric. I thought it would be perfectly fitting for this pattern. I picked this up on fabric.com and I want to say it was around $10 a yard and I purchased five yards. Five yards was just enough for me to make my dress as well as a pair of shorts, which I will share with you in a future video. I think it was the perfect decision for this dress. For the lining of the bodice, I used a regular white cotton shirting fabric for the lining of the bodice. And I think this fabric is fantastic. It's beautiful, it's drapey, it's bright colored. The white background kind of takes down some of the colors. I think it's fantastic and I love the way it came out. The size that I made for this dress is a size 16. However, I will say that there is a part of me that wishes that I would have purchased a size 14 and just made a full bust adjustment on the size 14. I typically will make a size 16 to accommodate my full bust as well as my waist. I have a fuller waist, however, I have a small hips. So it always seems best for me to buy a size 16 and then alter the size 16 to fit my body in other areas. However, I made a couple of different muslins of this dress before cutting into my beautiful fabric and I'll share those muslins with you in a second. And I will say the very first muslin that I made was extremely too big on the sides as well as um, in the back bodice pieces. Now, my version of the dress does look different from the pattern cover and there is a reason why. For one, with my muslins, I did choose to do the spaghetti strap option that is provided in the pattern. However, I found after wearing the muslin that I made, which I'll share with you in a second, I didn't feel very comfortable having the thin straps and I thought this dress would be much better with a wider strap. I also like the option of being able to wear straps on my bra if I cho chose to. So on Instagram, I was inspired by the Corny Rainbow. She recently posted two different versions that she's made of this dress. And for her version, her most recent version, she actually made long ties for the shoulders instead of doing the spaghetti straps. And I thought, that's perfect. I can tie it cover my bra with the tie straps, be able to wear a regular bra if I want to, but also I just felt a little bit more secure and I like that it's a thicker band. For the straps of this dress, I cut out four pieces of three inch by 40 inches of fabric, okay? I folded it in half, right sides together, and then I sewed a line of stitching down the edge of the strap and then turned it right side out and flipped in, tucked in the edges of the ties on one end and folded them in, ironed it and stitched them down close. So that's how I finished the edge of these ties. And instead of having these spaghetti straps, which are only two straps, on, you know, one on each side, I sewed one strap on each side of the front and the back 
bodice. So there are two front straps and two back straps, and then you tie them and adjust them at the shoulders. I think this is a really great option for my bustier friends like myself. Um, you just feel a bit more secure having the flexibility to have a thicker strap. But also, if you're like me and you have very narrow shoulders, I'm very busty, but I have very narrow shoulders. I find that with spaghetti straps and other straps like this, sometimes they tend to fall off my shoulders. So I either have to move them over on the body and not follow the guide of the bodice pieces or you know i just have to deal with them falling off or i have to take off additional length of the straps in order to, to get them to stay in place for this particular version um doing the ties means that it's not falling off my shoulders because i can tie it to the amount of tightness that will keep it in place i can also if i wanted to tie this to my bra and it will stay in place if i decide to wear a regular bra instead of a strapless bra let me show you my muslins The very first muslin that I made, as I mentioned before, was a straight 16. This is the muslin. If you recognize the fabric, I used the remnant pieces from my Summer Essential top that I made in the very first episode. So this is also a rayon chalet. I did this because I knew I would be making my final version in a rayon chalet. So this is the first version with the spaghetti straps in a size 16. However, it was really too big when I made it. It was falling off on me in every way that you can think of, okay? For all three muslins, I added an inch and a half to the bodice front and back pieces. I did that because I'm a fuller busted woman and because I wanted to be able to cover all of my bras, whether they be strapless or whether they be bras with straps. But I will tell you the majority of my bras, the back band is about three inches wide, so about this wide, okay? Once you get to a certain size in bras, it is very difficult to find a back band that is less than three inches, okay? So I added additional length to the back bodice, and as you can see, this particular test version or muslin has a puplum on it. And I did that because I wanted to be able to wear the bodice around, see if it was comfortable, and see if I would make any adjustments, right? Right away, I had to do a major adjustment. And what I did is I turned the little muslin or test garment um, right side out. I, it was before I attached the skirt, opened it up, and I pinched out a half of inch on each side, okay? Pinching out a half an inch on each side made it so that there wasn't so much gapy space under the arms and down the sides of the bodice. It tightened it up for me. The other thing that I did is I had to shorten the straps. The regular straps came so far off that they just fell off my shoulders. So what I did is I pinched down two inches of the straps on each side and just tacked it down to hide it on the inside. So I knew that with the final version, if I used the straps for that particular version, I would have to reduce the length of the straps by two inches. Um, that is something that I have to do quite often, especially with Mimi G patterns I have found. The other thing that I did is you'll see on the back, I use elastic loops instead of fabric loops. I did that because I didn't really want to take the time to make the fabric loops for test garments. And it worked out fine and it looks great on the back. It's definitely a cool little hack that I will continue to use in the future for other projects. But what this is, is just the elastic hair ties that you can get at Target, Walmart, CVS, wherever. And I just cut them the length of the finished fabric loop length so that they would be the same size and loop them over some basic black buttons, which I will be taking off of this test garment and saving for a future project because I like these buttons um, and I definitely don't want them to just be wasted. I have been wearing this test run garment around. It is not completely flattering, so <laughs> it's definitely something I don't feel comfortable leaving the house in, but because it's so loose, even after making the adjustments, but I have been wearing it just to see, especially before I made my final version, if I could stand it and if there were more things I wanted to change about it. So this is the first version. And as I mentioned, I added the peplum so that I could wear it as a top. It's comfortable, it's soft, it's cute. It's just a little awkward fitting in the bodice, a little loose. 
So that was this version. Knowing that I was going to have to reduce the width of the pattern pieces, I made another version and this time I took off a half an inch on each pattern piece. So a half an inch on each side of the back bodice pieces, a half an inch on each side of the front bodice piece. So this time I made it out of a black satin because I had some plans, okay? I did like the design of this, having the peplum on the bottom, the length of it where it hits the top of my jeans. I just thought having a black satin version would be so cute. So I used some remnant pieces that I had in my stash to make a peplum top out of black satin. It's beautiful, okay? This test garment is bodice is beautiful, okay? It fits my mannequin so well. I took it off, but it fits her so well. One of the things that I failed to remember is that since padding out my mannequin to meet my measurements, I've gained quite a bit of weight, okay? So I've gained quite a bit of weight, probably about 10 pounds, right? And it's all in my bust, back, and belly. It's where it's at, okay? <laughs> so um, I should have known there was a problem when this fit my mannequin perfectly. <laughs> so um, I made the muslin, put it on the mannequin. I was so pleased with it. And again, what I did to make this version was I reduced half an inch on each side of the front bodice and half an inch on each back piece. That was too much, friends. I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know what I was thinking, okay? I should have taken off a fourth of inch on each side because for this version, I pinched out half an inch on each side and that was including both the front and the back pieces. I hope what I'm saying makes sense. So basically I made this beautiful test garment and it's too small. <laughs> the length is perfect. It covers my bra really nicely front and back, but it is so tight that the buttons stretch like this and there's a gap in the back. And it's because I should have taken a fourth of an inch off of each side of the bodice pieces rather than a half an inch. I took off too much. The other thing is it's so tight that my bust starts uh, pull. And so you can kind of see the thread that I used um, on the bust starts. So that's definitely not a look that I'm going for. I did save this bodice because I think it might be nice um, if I decide to finish it off and make the top, I could give it to my sister who's slightly smaller than me. I think it would fit her nicely. I don't know if it's her style, but I thought I would maybe pass it along, finish it off and pass it along because it came out so nice. And I lined this with just some leftover cotton fabric that I had in my stash that I've been using to line other things with. So that was pretty devastating, especially because it came out so nice. And that's one thing I wanna say is when you're making a garment and you know you're going to be cutting into some precious fabric eventually, it's really nice to do a test garment or a muslin. And a lot of times when you make a muslin, when it comes to making your final version, it's almost like muscle memory. Like you already know what to do. You remember the steps to do. You're less likely to make mistakes. Everything goes so smooth. Well, this came out beautiful and smooth because I had already done one test run. And I was so confident because I had done so many alterations to the first version, reducing the length of the straps, taking in the pattern pieces, redrafting the pattern pieces, adding an inch and a half to the bottom of the bodice pieces. It was just coming together so easy and so nice and then it didn't fit. So I was really sad about that. I was tired and I was frustrated. So I, rather than making a third muslin where I only reduced the pattern pieces by a fourth of an inch on each side, I decided to just make the straight size 16 and then I figured I'd wear it and then make adjustments to the fit of the final garment once I created it. So rather than redrafting the pieces for a second time, that's what I did. Let's talk about this particular version of my dress. So <laughs> I made the dress and obviously it was going to be too big in the bodice, too wide. So this is the back of the dress. I'm gonna show you what I did with the buttons in order to accommodate that. Also, I wanna to talk to you about when you're doing a full bust bodice like this, you might find that because of the fullness of your breast, your full bust is going to be a huge difference between your under bust measurement. 
and your under bust measurement is actually re really important for this type of dress. If you look at Mimi G's version, the back bodice piece is flat to her skin on her back, okay? There's no gapping or gaping, okay? But if you're a busty person, you might have to do a full bust adjustment to accommodate the length of the bodice and the fullness of your bust. And you have to make the adjustment on the back as well so that the sides match up. But you might find that there's a huge gap. See how it's flat here and there's a gap here? It's because the under bust measurement is much smaller than your full bust measurement. I hope what I'm saying makes sense. So I'm gonna show you what I did to accommodate this problem and as my full busted friends out there uh, who have the same challenge, I want you to see what I did as well. You can absolutely make this dress. It just needs some additional love and attention. Okay, so these are my self fabric buttons. I'm gonna undo them. And one of the cool things about using a rayon chalet is that when you're sewing on the bias, when you cut these loops on the bias, it already gives you a little bit of stretch, but with rayon, it'll give you a tad bit more stretch than if you're using cotton or something else when you're cutting on the bias. Okay, so I'm gonna show you what I did in order to accommodate the gapping. So if you look at this button placket here, Right here, half a, about a half inch from the edge of the bodice piece is where the buttons are supposed to be, okay? I found that they, what if I did it there, the bodice was just way too loose. You see that? Way too loose. And that was not gonna work for me. It was gonna be tipping and not being flattering on my body. So I chose to move it over an inch from the edge of the bodice piece. Also, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but another thing that I did is, rather than it being a straight inch from the edge, as you go down the buttons, they slightly move over a bit to the left. And that is so that it closes some of the gapping at the bottom. So my buttons are not gonna be in a straight line. And actually, to be honest, I could have moved over these two buttons a little bit more even to make it more flat on the back, but I just chose to slightly adjust it to where the buttons were slightly angled to this side in order to close up that gap. Another thing that I found is that by moving the buttons all the way over here, it meant that the fabric kind of did one of these numbers. It was like a pointy little triangle at the top of the back bodice and it was driving me nuts because when it was laying flat and not on my body, everything lined up perfectly. But when I put it on, there was just too much space between this area here and it just shifted. So I just added a little snap button. Snap buttons have become my best friend. <laughs> and since adding that snap button, it lays straight and flat across the top. It keeps it in place. So I hope all that makes sense. If you are a person who has a very small underbust compared to their full bust measurement, this is an issue that you are going to encounter is that you'll have extra fabric at the bottom of your bodice piece here. So I'm sure you could probably cut the pattern pieces at an angle on the sides in order to accommodate that, but I found it easiest just to slightly move the buttons over. So that's how I addressed that issue. Let's talk about the pattern instructions. I do find that the pattern instructions for this particular dress were great. They were like spot on. I didn't have any issues with following them whatsoever. And as I mentioned before, Mimi G patterns all have a sew along and the sew alongs are fantastic. I believe that this particular sew along was filmed with Norris, Mimi G's husband. He did a fantastic job. I really enjoy watching both of their styles of teaching, so. I highly recommend this pattern for that reason in particular in most of Mimi G's patterns because of how nice it is to have a sew along as well as clearly written instructions. Now let's talk about the back dip of this dress. This is where the elastic is, as you can see. And I love this feature on this dress. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. I do wanna let you know I did not use the elastic guide that came with the pattern and a lot of times I don't use them um, and the reason why I didn't use it for this particular dress is because I have a short torso I don't have a long back 
so I wanted to make sure that this didn't dip below where my underwear would be. So if I had used the guide that came with it, my um, dip would be way down here and it would be showing my the top of my underwear. So I reduced the length of the elastic guide measurement so that it fell perfectly on me where it falls on Mimi G. One thing I wanna point out about this dress for my fuller sisters out here, okay? Um, if you're self-conscious about your back fat showing, if you have back fat, I probably would steer clear from this pattern or you can do what I plan to do so that I can wear this dress to work is I'm actually going to pair it with a white bodysuit. And so in order to wear this for work, it's gonna flatten out my back rolls, but also it's gonna cover the skin that's being revealed on the back. This is also a tip for my modest sewing friends, which I am a modest sewist. I do make some things that are a bit revealing, but for the most part, I'm pretty modest. You might wanna consider just wearing a bodysuit underneath. And I say bodysuit because it's smooth and it lays flat. And it'll be a very cute feature to have just a smooth black pan or smooth panel underneath. Um, preferably, I would say white for this print, but I could easily do that with a pink, given that there's so many different shades of pink in this dress in orange. But yeah, a white bodysuit is what I plan to do so that I can wear this to work as well as a little bit past summer. Um, I live in the Bay Area, it doesn't really get hot here until end of August, September, early October, which seems so backwards and strange, but that's just how it is. Um, so I want to be able to wear this when it's actually hot, because it's definitely not hot today. It's barely 60 degrees. I also want to be able to wear this dress right now when it's chilly outside with the bodysuit underneath. They have white bodysuits that are sleeveless. I actually have a pattern for one. They have white bodysuits that have a mock neck. They have a long sleeve. You can definitely find the perfect bodysuit or bodysuit pattern that you could wear under a dress like this. So really gorgeous dress. Love the colors, love everything about it. Um, I just had trouble with fitting the bodice. And typically when I make dresses that are form fitting in the bodice that are have a spaghetti strap, this tends to happen, which is why it's important to do test garments and muslins, okay, to try to get the fit right before you cut into your very nice fabric. I love this dress. It's comfortable, it's beautiful, it's sophisticated. I think it will be perfect to wear all day long and also perfect to wear to dinner with heels. Now I am going to be inserting some video clips as well as some photos of me wearing the dress. I'm going to be pointing out some of the things on the dress that I had challenges with with taking pictures. As I mentioned before, like today is 60, but the day that I took these pictures, it was about 58 degrees and windy, okay? The plan was to take these pictures near the water or in some really beautiful settings in my neighborhood. However, the wind was blowing, oh, it was blowing so hard that not only was my dress blowing up, but my hair was whipping around my head, okay? So it was really challenging to film. Another thing is one of the areas where I thought would be really cute to film, um, had a lot of joggers. And so every time I would go to do my little walk, here came a jogger. <laughs> I'm going to insert the clips of me trying to model this dress, but you'll also be able to see some really good pictures, better quality pictures of me in the dress in my yard. And I'll show what it looks like twirling around. I do wanna point out that in a couple of the pictures, I had some fails because I did not realize that my heavy, heavy boobs, okay, had busted the strap on my strapless bra, okay? Most strapless bras come with optional straps that you can attach onto your bra, and this particular strap wasn't having it, okay? It kept busting and falling down, and to be fair, the strapless bra that I was wearing was, I believe, a 36 double D, which was way too small. So <laughs> it was struggling to keep itself together, okay? So in one of the pictures, which I'll insert now, you'll be able to see that the strap is falling down. And I wanted to insert this picture because in this picture, you can also see the fit of the back bodice, which still isn't perfect, okay? 
Um, also, you'll be able to see that I have a little back fat, okay? But it's cute, okay? I'm about to show off my back fat this summer, okay? On my vacation, okay? Um, but you'll be able to see what that looks like and where it falls. I did struggle with wearing this dress and not showing my bra band. Quite a few of my pictures and video clips still show the bottom part of my back bra band. And it was super annoying trying to readjust my dress so that it wouldn't show. Now, I did purchase a strapless bra that is almost my exact skin color. Hopefully it comes in time for my next summer vacation. But this is something that if you have a thick back bra band, you might run up against issues with this if you don't get the back bodice piece of your dress perfect. There's lots of people who use tape in order to tape their garments to their bra. And that is actually a really great option. It's just that when it comes to getting undressed, that's where you might fall into some issues. If you have no issue with that, you can absolutely use the, I think it's called Hollywood tape, to tape your back bodice to your bra to hopefully keep it flat and together, okay? I did not do that for these pictures because that's not realistic for my life, okay? I'm not taping my boobs, okay, because that's not me. I just don't have the time for that. I also don't have the confidence that my boobs will stay in place with tape, okay? <laughs> so those are all really great options, but I personally would prefer to wear a bra. So you'll be able to see what that looks like in this dress, okay, me moving around. Now, one of the things I want to address too is will I make this dress again? While there's so many beautiful qualities about this dress and this pattern, I personally don't think that I will make this dress again. However, I do really love this cool back dip feature of the dress. Um, so, I'm gonna think on it, okay? I think this would be really cute with a t-shirt style top bodice that has more coverage, maybe comes down a little, um, maybe no back buttons, something that has a wider neck hole that I could pull over my head. I think that would be super cute as a pattern hack, but the way the pattern is designed, I do not think that I will make this dress again. And in my personal opinion, this dress is special and it's beautiful and I don't want to make a bunch of them. I think that this is good enough to have this particular version in my closet. I'm saying that today. I might change my mind tomorrow. Okay, <laughs> I might completely change my mind tomorrow, but that's where I stand as of today. I love the look of this dress. I love the design of this dress. I just don't like how the bodice pieces were difficult for me as a busty woman. I think it would be really cool if this particular pattern had bust cup sizes, like some other simplicity patterns I've seen in the past, or even McCall patterns that have had that. That would make this particular pattern more flexible for women of different sizes. And I think that for someone who is not extremely busty, this pattern right here is a winner. I think that you will not have any issues. The bodice instructions were so simple even when it came down to adding the lining for the bodice. I found it to be a really enjoyable sew all around. Even making my muslin versions, I found very enjoyable. I just personally wish that this particular pattern came with bust sizes so that I could have avoided all of the muslins. And also it would have helped with my confidence, I think, in making this dress. I highly recommend this pattern to anyone that wants to give it a try. Now, I mentioned that the Corny Rainbow also made this dress and she is a busty woman as well. And her dress versions came out beautiful. She doesn't look like in her pictures and videos that she's having any fit issues. She's done a fabulous job of fitting her dress to her body. She also added, I want to say an inch and a half to the front and back bodice pieces of her dress as well. So it was nice to see that we made the same adjustment. Um, and also, like I said before, she inspired me to do the tie feature on the shoulder straps. But so that, that's just to give you an idea that she personally made a version that looked gorgeous being a full busted woman. Um, and you know, I am also a full busted woman, but I feel as though this particular dress can be perfect for everyone if you are able to figure out the fit issues for your body. So 
yes, I recommend it to anyone who wants to give it a try. All right. Thank you so much for listening to all of that. I hope you enjoyed my pattern review for this particular dress. I hope you found this dress to also be an essential summer dress for your next summer vacation and that you think it's beautiful like I think it's beautiful. I want to remind you to head over to Talisha's channel to see what dress that she has made for her summer vacation essential dress. And also I want to talk to you a little bit about this giveaway. Okay. Talisha and I are both doing a giveaway on our channels. And like I mentioned before, before, you're welcome to enter my giveaway as well as her giveaway. You must be subscribed to both of our YouTube channels, okay? And you must also have been watching the series, okay? Because in the comment section of this video right here, I want you to comment and let me know what your favorite garment is of mine that you have seen in the Summer Vacation Sewing Series. So again, I made a top, I made a swimsuit cover up, I made beach pants, and I've now made a dress. So I want you to tell me which of my garments was your favorite and what you liked about it. Now, do the same on Talisha's channel and you can enter both our giveaways. We will be comparing notes to see that you are subscribed to both of our channels. So please make sure that your profile is not private. If it's private, we won't be able to see if you are subscribed to our channels. All right, so I hope that you enter that giveaway. The giveaway is for a gift card to my, on my channel. It's a gift card to LA Finch Fabric, one of my favorite fabric shops. They have some really beautiful rayon chalets, which I'm obsessed with lately. I've also purchased some really quality denim there. You can watch a previous video where I did fabric hauls and check out some of the things that I've received in the past. Love that shop. It's woman owned, okay? And I think that you will love what they have to offer. So you have a chance to win a gift card for that shop on my channel. When you go to Talisha's channel, she'll tell you who she will have a gift card for on her channel, okay? So winners will be contacted and announced in two weeks. So we might do a separate video in two weeks to share who the winners are, but we also might just include that information in our next video, which is two weeks from today. I'll put the date of that on the screen. Please do enter both of our giveaways. If you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed the series, please do subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so that you're notified every time I upload a video. And also give me a big thumbs up and do the same for Talisha on her channel. Thank you so much for joining me and watching all of the episodes in my summer vacation sewing series. I hope you were inspired to make some of these garments for your next summer vacation. And I cannot wait to continue to provide some great content for you in the future. Thank you so much for your support. I hope you have a wonderful day, a wonderful week, and a fantastic summer. Have a good one. Bye.